This video gives you introduction to the 17 volume book set on Oracle R12 financials. You can see here all the books. If I scroll down, you will see that in total there are 20. Due to some large file sizes, I had to split some of the books into multiple files. So, but still, it is a 17 volume book set. Let us go over the contents of these book sets as examples so that you have an idea of how the course guides are structured and how you can use them. Let us move over to the first one which is Oracle General Ledger Part 1. Let me just expand the size. If I scroll down, you will see there is an index and for each of the functionality, you will see that the steps are given. Let us take an example of creating a ledger. So if you want to create a ledger, you have to go to accounting setup manager, you have to create a legal entity and then you have to create a ledger. So let us see how this topic has been explained in this course guide. Go to creating a ledger, you will see how you can navigate to an accounting setup manager. You have to go to general ledger responsibility, click on accounting setups and move on to the self-service page which allows you to create a legal entity and ledger. Once you are on the self-service page, how to create a legal entity? You have to click on create legal entity. That will take you to a form where you can give the legal entity name, organization name and all the details about your legal entity. Once you are done entering all the details, you can click on apply and your legal entity will be created. Once the legal entity is done, how do you go ahead with creating the ledger? You have to click add another row here. Then enter the legal entity name and click on next. To create a ledger, you have to enter the name of the ledger, chart of accounts you are going to use, accounting calendar, currency and subledger accounting method that all you can see here. Go to the next step where you enter all these and then click on next. Go over to the next page, you will see all the options that you specified for your ledger and then you have to click on finish. Once you are done with that, it will ask you to go to return to the accounting setups. So you are done with creation of the ledger. Once you have created a ledger, you have to set up ledger options, reporting currencies, balancing segment value assignments sub ledger accounting options etc. How do you do that? So go to ledger options, click on update and then you will get a screen where you can enter all the ledger options etc. So this is just an example I am explaining about how you can define a legal entity and ledger. Similarly, there are also many functionalities explained within this first part. So let us go to another one as a quick example, uploading journals from Excel. Web ADI. Generally, when explain when a functionality is explained, you will see all the setups and configurations required, and then you will see a transaction flow how you can perform that functionality. So here, first you have to set up the profile options. For example, you have to set up a viewer like Excel 2007 is the viewer that you are going to use. Then you have to download an Excel template from the launch journal wizard. Once you are done with setting up the layout and the content, you can create a document and the template will be downloaded to uh, your uh, computer and the template will be downloaded to your computer. Save the template on your computer and proceed to the next step. The template is saved as webadi.xls. Then you have to set up some Excel options before you open that file. So you open the Excel, go to Excel options, go to Trust Center, go to Trust Center settings and then you enable the trust access to VBA project object model and enable all the macros etc. So likewise you will see all the steps within this functionality have been explained here and finally you will see that the spreadsheet has been created, you have entered a sample journal and then you are ready to upload a journal and then when you try to upload the screen that comes and explains to you how the upload has gone the upload has been successfully completed here 
and then you can actually view the journal that you created with that upload so that was another example let me also go over some of the examples in other modules say in oracle payables part 3 this is the uh, list of all the chapters and the topics let us go to a slightly complex topic like retention invoices you will see that it has been divided into three parts first is the example second is what are the setups you need to perform for retention invoices and the third how you can perform the actual transaction cycle for retention go to retention invoices go over what is the meaning you will generally find that there are very brief descriptions because a picture is worth thousand words so i have tried to explain everything through oracle snaps and the steps which you would probably not find consolidated in any of the available books currently so first you have to set up the retainage account in the financials option that you will do it here explained by the snaps then go over and define what is the retainage or retention percentage for a particular supplier by querying the supplier clicking on the update going over to invoice management in the left pane going to the terms tab and going to the retainage rate that you want to specify for that supplier create a document style which is a complex purchase order go to document style create your document style define the parameters for your document style choose what are the functionalities you need within that document style apply to create see the confirmation that your document style is created and then you are ready to perform a retention transaction flow you have to create a po with the document style you created this is how you create a po and you will see a complete explanation and all the snaps how you can enter your po how you can verify whether the retainage rate has been defaulted etc and then you finally submit that po for approval here and then you verify that the approval has gone okay and the approval status is turned to approved and then proceed on entering the payables invoices this is the screen where you enter the payables invoice and you match this payables invoice and correlate with the po that you created just a minute ago match the invoice to a po enter the po number find the po and match it to the po in this screen view the retainage amount view that automatically the retention money has been applied and if you want to pay this invoice the retainage amount will be automatically deducted and only the amount that is the 85% amount that you defined over the supplier side will be paid to the supplier this is how and finally then you create a re retention release invoice uh, which is the remaining uh, 15% and all that entire flow along with the accounting details this is the accounting for the payables invoice that you created for retention and this is your retainage amount which has gone to the credit of retainage which you defined in the financial option then you pay this invoice and then you actually create a retainage release invoice etc so you will see that all the steps within a particular function have been narrated along with all the setups and the examples okay let us go over some example within payables module let us take a topic like let us go over a different format that you can see here a two page format and how you create customers so first of all what is the customer data model how do you create the customers a customer and then what is a customer account what are customer sites what are business purposes and what are the gl accounts you associate with a customer and here are some of the examples at why you need customer sites why you need customer accounts and how they are consolidated into one single customer and how multiple operating units can share this information across them so you will see here page by page all the snaps that you need to have for creating your customer customer accounts and customer sites narrated if you go to the index you can go back and see what are the steps this is the first 
you created uh, you understood the customer data model then it it's a uh, small dialogue on what is trading community architecture then creating a customer then creating customer accounts then creating customer sites etc and how customer uh, auto accounting works and so on and uh, a complex topic like oracle e business tax it describes an example tax model this is a example i have given an entire tax model has been created within this course guide go to the tax model it specifies first of all the requirements how you are going to need a tax model what would be the functionalities of that tax models what is tax recovery what are tax exceptions what are tax exemptions and how you can set up all these options within your tax so when you uh, create a tax model what are the steps and you'll find those steps narrated here as to creating tax regimes and then creating taxes and tax statuses jurisdictions recovery rates and different rules like place of supply tax applicability taxable basis calculate tax amount etc making tax available to the transaction and then actually perform a transaction cycle wherein you enter a receivable transaction or a payables invoice and the tax that you created that actually gets applied to your receivable transactions or the payables invoices then you can create item exceptions party exemptions and test with those parties and items that respective tax codes are getting applied so that is a brief introduction to all this course guide this entire course guide 17 volume set has more than 2000 pages and more than 2500 snaps of oracle e business suite so i hope this will be a very very useful uh, book set for all the people who are learning uh, oracle r12 and my best wishes for you thank you Bye-bye.